guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Saturday, February 10th, uh, with no games to talk about because the Wizards played on Friday. We're obviously recording this on Saturday, and the Celtics don't play again until tomorrow, so it's one of the rare full-length pods where we don't have a game to talk about. So we we'll talked about some other stuff. We've done a ton of videos lately because of the trade deadline. We talked to him, and we talked Springer. We talked all the moves. We were live. But we're going to go over some of our thoughts again because we haven't talked about it on the full length pod. So in case you only listen on audio platforms, which go check out the YouTube. What are you doing? Um, you, you get our thoughts and stuff like that as well. Also, make sure to comment what's popping on the podcast for a chance to win a $10 in Pop Nito gift card. I uh, thought I'd say that at the top just so people know. Also, might as well say it at the top. How about them Celtics.com? If you'd like some Celtics news, we're posting there. We're trying to be consistent. So check that out. But anyways, Sam, how you doing? Uh... I'm okay. Tired. Uh, okay. Per usual. Yeah, of course. Two hundred dollars later in the wallet. What Casino happened? Got me today. Brutal. Uh, Blackjack. Blackjack. I was up to and uh, did not go well. Mm, very tough. I was uh, at the golf simulator this morning, and I, oh yes. Sh- so the way golf sim works is they give you any putt that what's it that's within six feet, which when you're bad is not usually a gimme. And so I shot a career high today. If I had shot uh, on a real course, which is not how it works because I would have missed a lot of those putts, but we take it. I shot an 83. We take it. <laughs> Anyways. Wow. Who'd you go with? Yeah. Henry, uh, Henry Graham yes. and Mike, who are two of my other buddies. Yeah. Henry stayed awake. <laughs> he did. He was awake. Good for him. Anyways, like I said, let's talk about the Celtics trade deadline moves because we haven't talked about it on the full pod yet. So Xavier Tillman and Jaden Springer joining the Celtics at the deadline. Lamar Stevens, Delano Banton out along with, I think, cumulative three second round picks, except Celtics technically got one from Portland, but that's never going to convey. So effectively, three seconds out, to two players in, two players out. Celtics get Xavier Tillman, Jaden Springer. Let's start with Tillman going order here. Tillman talked at practice, said he was excited to be in Boston. He talked to Abby Chin about how he was definitely going to reach out to Al Horford, which makes sense for Xavier Tillman. Joe Mazzula has talked about how it could take him some time to get used to their defensive schemes. But very good defensive player, a little rough around the edges on offense. And as we talked about on talking Z's, seems to be a pretty awesome person off the court as well. So overall good addition, but uh, your thoughts. I'm excited about this. I liked Lamar Stevens. You also liked Lamar Stevens. He didn't really ever get any opportunity with the Celtics. It's very tough to break into the Boston's rotation this year. Like they have a lot of good players. Every time we talked about a potential trade target, it was, oh, is this guy going to get in over Pritchard, Hauser, Cornette off the bench? The answer was usually no. Um, Tillman is somebody that might be a yes. It depends. Depends on the day. Depends on the situation. He's certainly capable of giving you a good boost, especially in the defensive end. He has more versatility than a lot of these other guys that are tall off the bench do because he's only 6'8". He plays big, but he's not a liability on the perimeter. I'm interested to see how he fits defensively. I know you mentioned Joe thinking it's going to take him a bit to get used to what they're doing on that side of the ball. But once he gets settled, I would love to see him get some run. I think we're all excited for both of these guys to make their debut. But with him in particular, I want to see him go up against somebody that is towards the top in terms of talent. We've seen and heard about his heroic Step ups in the playoffs against Jokic and Anthony Davis. Is he going to be there for Giannis? Will he be there for a healthy Embiid? Uh, Bam Adebayo would be somebody. Would be sick if he played tomorrow. I would like to see Tillman get out there and try his best against. No Tillman, unfortunately. Oh, they already put out the report. <laughs> no Tillman this burger tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I. Someone said it. I forget who said it on Twitter, but he said it was like, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't play till after the Oscar break. Not reporting, but just speculating, which I guess makes sense. I get him in. Same thought. So. Yeah. Get, okay, buddy. Get him in. Get him used to the culture. Get him used to the way they do things and then roll him out after they have a little bit of time to get uh, what's it called? Uh, acclimated, acclimated to the team. Yeah. So wouldn't surprise me. I really like Tillman. <laughs> he's he's a good player. He played real minutes uh, for Memphis team in the playoffs. He was a starter for them because Steven Adams was out. He played well. Uh, again, I mean, I've said this on a bunch of other videos, but talk to some people that cover the Grizzlies. 
very high in his defense. Uh, Joe Molinax of Locked On Grizzlies said, you know, he's one of the only guys in the league who can cover LeBron and Jokic. Uh, Parker Fleming was talking to me, basically said his defense rocks. So very high praise uh, from the guys in Memphis. Um, Offensively, again, rough around the edges. I also talked to Bry- Bryson Wright of the Next Gen Pod. Uh, he spoke very highly of the defense, uh, not as much of the offense as they all did. Um, so it's going to be a work in progress. I do think there is some truth to he could be better in offense in Boston because his role would be simplified. He won't have to do as much at all. Yes. Uh, he is a very good rebounder for his size, too. Uh, he's only 6'8", 6'7", uh, so he is an undersized big, but he is strong and he gets active in the paint. Um, he seems like the exact type of player that Celtics fans will like a lot. So I'm very excited for Tillman. Uh, everything you've heard, everything we've we've seen uh, has been good things. And he seems like a player that um, can be utilized, especially because Brad Stevens said, you know, on the deadline day, we didn't really feel like we needed to do anything because our goal uh, heading into it was getting a big who could play next to Al, who could play next to KP, but also be a standalone big. And they found that in Tillman. So. Uh, got it for a cheap price too, and they have his bird rights, so they can retain him if they so choose. Good things. That Good stuff's things. the most exciting part because we we talked about this with Bobby, and they're setting themselves up to be flexible down the line. Not something you had to think about in the past, but with the new CBA, the amount of restrictions and ways that you can bring in talent are so high when you spend like the Celtics are. Their top six makes a ton of money. Tatum will make even more money once he gets signed to an extension. Brown will make even more money when his kicks in next season. Having guys that you can keep around and you can pay if they pan out is a great way to go about trying to keep the window open. We've heard a lot about window, 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 window. We used to hear about timelines. It was terrible. And now (laughs) we're talking about windows. And I think... The Celtics should be fine for a little while. I think they have enough talent on both sides of the the mountain where some guys are still going up, others are going down, and that's going to be okay. But you need the supplementary pieces to also be reliable. So this is a audition-type deal for both Tillman and Springer, who we'll talk about in a second, to see how they fit. And if they fit, you can pay them. It's great. Perfect. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and speaking of Springer, um, brought him in at the buzzer. Brad, when asked about it, like, was that a last-second thing? He said, he's somebody we've kept our eye on for a while. We liked him in the draft. Um, And it was something where we told Philly that if they did want to move him, we'd be interested. So that's sort of how it came about. Um, And they like him. He's six foot four. He can guard wings. His last game as a sixer, he guarded Steph Curry. uh, And Steph, like, only took one shot against him. I can't remember the exact stats, but he did a good job. Um, I do remember seeing a highlight where... He fouled Steph and it was called a four point play, but then they overturned it on the replay and Steph kicked his leg into Springer. And so offensive foul. Uh, So Springer can defend. He's uh, a motherfucker on defense, as the Celtics know, uh, because he played them pretty well in November. Uh, Brad said that wasn't even the start of it. They were more impressed by his preseason game. Uh, He had 14, five and five, something something like that. Um, Played super well in that one. Uh, That was the game he blocked Tatum. He seems like the antithesis to Peyton Pritchard. He seems like if we need some defense, maybe we roll with Springer, though Pritchard is definitively above him in the rotation uh, in terms of a ball handler, an offensive player, and for what it's worth, not the worst defender in the world. He's just small. Um, You have somebody who, if you need some stops at the guard position, Drew and and Derek need a rest, throw Springer in there, have him play a little bit. I'm excited. He's he's a good player. He's probably not going to play much this season. Um but he's 21 and he's under contract next year as well. So he's another guy they can look to develop. Yeah. I mean, Springer is somebody that I think is such an exciting addition. You can kind of point at the last point of yours as the reason why he's only 21. Brad Stevens talked about this move and he was like, listen, we've liked Springer for a few years and he's also younger than a lot of guys we were looking at in the draft. With that being said, He's got growing to do. He's played 50 career NBA games through three seasons. However, this year he's played the most. He's played, what, 34 for Philly? And he carved out a nice spot in their rotation, playing about 12 minutes a night on a team that was, for a while, very good. Embiid getting hurt makes them worse. They have fallen off a cliff a bit over the last month, month and a half. They're not the same team they were in the first few months. But he was still playing basketball then. He was part of the rotation. I'm excited because I'm pro defense. I'm in on Tillman, in on Springer. I think anytime you bring in somebody that can defend, 
you're bringing in somebody you can trust. If you can put that guy on the floor and know he's not going to be a liability on that end, I think you choose that over somebody that's going to put the ball in the basket but can't stop anybody any day. Like, that's why his feet doesn't play. He's a great shooter. He's not playing much defense. It's it's why he's on the end of the bench. It's why he took such a long time to be picked up in free agency. I think the entire league is starting to value defense. So at the very least, you have two guys that other teams are going to value. If you choose they don't fit or or like somebody like Springer doesn't develop the way you think, you can at least sell on that point. And I also think Pritchard will remain above him. Like you said, I think this is a maybe we don't love J.D. Davison or J.D. Davison's too small kind of move. But Springer's game mirrors O'Shea's, which is the conclusion we came to on the live stream recording of this. And I'm in. I like O'Shea. That's one of my guys. I love that he hustles. And we had a lot of commenters saying this team needs more grit. Well, you just got two servings of grit at the trade deadline. <laughs> that they did. I saw some Sixers fans say uh, we just gave them their next Marcus Smart. Shit. None too <laughs> so, pleased. The Sixers um, fan, which will tell you yeah. quite a bit. Very good. Very good for Brad Stevens. Speaking of the Sixers versus Celtics dichotomy, um, Daryl Morey was asked about the trades later that night. Uh, and he said, we want to win a title now. We don't think he's ready to uh, – effectively, he's not ready to – what's the word? Contribute to a title team right now. Brad Stevens, um, earlier in the day, so this was before Maury's comments, told reporters uh, at the Arbuck Center, he said, we think he's an athlete who can play athletically in the playoffs. Uh, and then when asked about you know dealing – with their quote unquote enemies, like ma- having to make deals with teams you're competing against. He was like the realist, like part of his answer was realistically, like some of us just probably have different evaluations of talent. So I thought it was funny to hear Maury say, we don't think he's ready. And then Brad say, we think he can play in the playoffs for two teams that are effectively trying to compete for a title this season. So uh, this is truly a, uh, who, he knows ball off. Is that, we can call it that. Like, a, who, he, does he know ball? He knows ball <laughs> off. Yeah. Who, who's the, yeah. Uh, the battle of the brains, the ball brains. Exactly. Yes. Um, I think it's pretty great that Stevens has faith in Springer. It was one of the most interesting tidbits from his press conference. I know we talked about it on Talking Seas with Bobby. The fact that he believes he's going to go out there and not be a liability in the playoffs is huge. It's kind of what I just talked about. Anybody that can play defense, you can at least trust to not get targeted every single time. Because if you've got a, uh, we'll say, traffic cone out there, that is a huge risk because you're allowing players on the other team to get easy looks or get going. And those guys get confident. It could screw even if that guy's not on the floor anymore, at least if he sucks at offense, as soon as you put in somebody that can shoot, that hole is gone. I don't think, uh, you know, insert defender here is going to feel all confident because they're just sitting there watching him shoot threes off the back of the rim. It's just not going to happen. So, It's great that Stevens believes they got a good guy. It's great that the coaching staff reportedly has faith in Jaden Springer. Sam Cassell and uh, remind me who the other guy is. He's a player developmental coach on Missoula's staff. Tyler Lashbrook, I believe is his name. Yes, it is him. They both came from Philly. They both had experience coaching Springer, seeing him as a player, seeing how he works, and they believe in him. So that's a huge get for the Celtics. They paid absolutely nothing for him. These are both just low risk moves that you really shouldn't worry about. It's weird that Maury's just like, hey, yeah, we're out on him. All right. Sure. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I- I'm I'm excited for Springer. I-, I think he'll be good. Again, I don't think he'll play right away. I think he's a fine player. I saw comments on our video saying all these fucking guys care about his three point shooting. No, we just said he's probably not going to be a good three point shooter. We also you said he was stupid. good. Yeah, are you guys dumb. Like, do you guys just not watch the video? Do you just pick and choose what you listen to? Uh, and obviously, I'm not talking to the comments as a whole, but like, some of you guys just listen to parts you dislike and comment about that. Like, can you can you like contextualize things before you get angry? Like, like can we? What are we doing? The Springer one was just weird because I remember personally being kind of excited. I was like, oh, this Me is too? cool. Like, the three point percentage isn't there, but like, I like his game. I like that he tries hard, and I think he's going to be somebody that could. I think I even said he could come in and win them a game. People are weird, man. We'll get to more of that later. But, anyways, the NFL season is wrapping up, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Now, the app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, 
find banks in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Next thing we got is JB plans to use Tatum in the dunk contest. Now, that's pretty much all there is to this tidbit. Uh, he was asked about it by Gary Washburn. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Asked about it by Gary Washburn. And he was like, yeah, I'm down. Like, I'll, I'll use him in the dunk contest. Why not? Could be fun. Um, I'm oh, sorry. I skipped that. I, I didn't see that. I'm, I've been looking at the top. Uh, I see you changing the sheet. But, um, yeah, JB, we know he's doing the dunk contest. Cool. Like, cool that I'll use JT. I mean, it's cool that Tatum wants to get involved in this. He said yeah. he doesn't want to do the dunk contest himself. He, like, kind of scoffed at the idea. What do you say? Fuck no, he's not doing it. I saw the clip. <laughs> well, yeah. well, Cam was going to ask about the dunk contest, and someone else did, but he still had the mic, so he was going to ask a question. And he goes, I was going to ask about this, but do you think you'll ever do it? And he just goes, nope. And he walks off and Tatum leaves. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't want to do it if I was Tatum. I don't think there's – also, like – for what it's worth with Tatum, I don't think he has like a ton of like freak athleticism. I think he's a great athlete. I think he has a good burst, but he's not Jalen. He mm -hmm. doesn't have that bounce to do yeah. the like super cool, crazy dunks. Like think Tatum's done between like, the sixties in games. He's done windmills in games. He's got a crazy list of posters. Like if you go back and you watch like Bleacher Report made a clip of all Jalen's best dunks. But if there was one for Tatum, he would have plenty of posters, but his posters come because he gets to the rim quick. It's not because he's, he's jumping tall. over people. Yeah, he's a big he, yeah, he's got he's got the length. But I like that he's getting involved. It's cool that the teammates care about each other. This is good for team chemistry. This is good mm -hmm. for their relationship. If you want to look at it that way, uh, it would be sick if he was like play defense, get dunked on. <laughs> do you um? Do you think Tatum can do between the legs? Maybe that's stupid, but like, yeah, I think any I, NBA. So. Well, not any, but a yeah, lot well, of NBA <laughs> players can do that. They just can't do it like at game speed or where they're jumping from really far away. I was going to say, if you rolled with any, I was going to break out a list of like seven guys. I was like, brother, I don't know if any is the correct word to use there. <laughs> the reason I say that is because there are a lot of guys that can dunk, but you never see them dunk. Like look at Peyton Pritchard, right? Peyton Pritchard can dunk. The reason why Peyton Pritchard never dunks is because he can't dunk when he jumps from far away. He can do it right underneath the basket. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of these guys have more athleticism where they can get to the rim. It's just they can't do it in a game spot because they'll get chased down. Yeah, 100%. Anyways, that was all there really was to that. Uh, to I'm excited for this, though. I'm Rare non-actual game excitement for me. We'll see. Because I think see Jalen's cooking. And shout out to Oliver Fox, who did a huge like that was really dunk sick. contest thing on Celtics blog. Go read it. Mm, we love Oliver him. Fox, beast. We'll have him on the show eventually. Shout out to Oliver Fox. Next thing, skipped over this when we were talking about Springer, but while Brad Stevens was talking to reporters uh, on what today, Friday, on on Friday, sorry, um, he talked about the mindset stuff. Uh, someone asked Brad, or Bobby Manning tweeted this. I don't know if he was going to ask questions, but uh, asked Brad if they're on track to win a title. He said, there's so much that has to happen to even give yourself a chance. We're good enough to make a deep run and potentially win it, and other teams are good enough to beat us in the first round. We have to continue to improve. I said, we have to make sure we're focused on the right stuff. We have to stay unselfish. We have to stay about the team. Uh, we have to keep getting better. That's the reality of it. This is high-level competition. Nothing is done on paper. Everything has to be done on the court. And this is exactly what Joe Mazzulla has been saying all season, like verbatim. So I think the Celtics are on the same wavelength in terms of their mindset. Well, they need to be serious. They need to play like it. Like a lot, and, and I guess we can bleed the Joe stuff into this too, because Joe had another like, hey, look, like we're happy these games are close, quote. The Celtics need to play serious in the big moments. Like, we kind of talked about this after the game yesterday. I was kind of like annoyed with the way the game went yesterday. I'm happy that they can turn it on. But I don't like that there have been plenty of situations you can point at and be like, well, what about this one? Why didn't they show up here? Like, a lot of their losses are not, like, this team was ass and we didn't try. It was, oh, wow, like, yeah, we just got our doors blown off in Milwaukee. Oh, yeah, Clippers, good team, came in, steamrolled us at home. Oh, Lakers, that's a big rivalry game. Oh, no, we're not going to get up for them. Like, they're not playing LeBron and AD. Why do we have to try? It doesn't matter that everyone cares about this game. And there was another one in there, too. Oh, Denver which was just a bad offensive game. I think they did have good effort in that game, but it was like a lights were too bright, couldn't actually get shots off type of thing, which I didn't love. Anyways, I am excited to see 
them actually try for 48 minutes at a playoff game. Like, imagine if they have Atlanta in the first round and they just, like, get to womp them. Where it's like, we have to play for real. Like, it sounds more like when Joe talked about this yesterday. He said he said this. I want as many close games as possible. This is from Noah Dazel on or Dow. Yeah, he said he said this post game. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, I want as many close games as possible. And he went on to explain that they had multiple situations in shoot around that they had gone over that they kind of like played into in the game. It definitely isn't this way, but it almost sounds like he's like, hey, like don't try for a little bit so we can have close games. <laughs> Not I'm not all, saying it's a it, it's almost <laughs> a, in that hypothetical. It's almost like a good thing. He's like, fuck up. See if you can recover. As much as that is frustrating, I do. And I fully agree with the concept of close games are good for the Celtics. hundred percent. I agree. Million percent. Because um, last year in the year before, like think, think of like under Eme, right? When they became the best team on earth for three months. Sure. And they were just like, Belt to ass, shout out Pat Bev to everybody. Like, beating teams by 30, beating another team by 30. We all were like, this rules, but then they would get in a close game and we would all be like, mm, I don't know about this one, Chief. Like, I don't know if I can trust them. Now they've been in enough situations where they should have practice for it. Sorry, didn't mean to jump in. Um, No, I mean, the reality of it, they're always going to be close games. They're not going to fucking blow out every team every night. And you're definitely not going to blow out every team in the playoffs. There's no. very rarely a blow out in the playoffs. That's not like, that's not how basketball works. Like the, as, as much as like you, you want to blow out every team, like especially get to the postseason, like they're in the playoffs for a reason. They're not going to be a, a rollover team unless you draw like one of the teams you said, like where if you get an easier opponent, but like, and for what it's worth. And I, I fucking hate when you're super negative because then I have to be the devil's advocate and the comments are like, Jack's unrealistic. Jack's a moron. Jack doesn't get it because the comments are nihilistic and they get angry at everything. I tried to play both sides on that. Like, I don't, I don't think them having close games is a bad thing. My, I, no, I'm about to, that's not what I'm referencing. I'm referencing okay. what I'm about to talk about. You mentioned what, like four losses that they, you know, big game. They didn't show up in. That's of like 40 games. Like, it's not like they're a very good basketball team. Like having four, like, and even throwing the Warriors. So what? Five, five. They're a good, they are a good basketball bad team. teams. They beat the Bucs this season. They beat the Knicks on opening night. They, they, you know, they, they beat the Knicks every time. Don't they forget it. the Knicks. They beat the Mavs, you know, the Timberwolves OT game. They, they, like they've had plenty of equally good wins. It's just some of their good wins against good teams are because they blow out the good teams. Uh, and so as much as they've had, yes, some bad losses, they're fucking 40 and 13. What's the record? 40 and 12. 12. Like they're a damn good basketball team. They're five games above the Bucks in, in the Eastern Conference and four and a half ish games above every other team in the NBA. Like, yes, they've had some rough games, but they're like the best team in basketball by a mile. Like, like not it like right now in terms of standings, they're the best team. And yes, it's frustrating that they haven't been able to close out some of these close games, but they've also like won a bunch of the games like they also won some of those games and and the reason that everyone is so worried oh they didn't beat this team they didn't beat, because it doesn't happen often because you're not used to seeing it and so it stands out more because they are so good um and so like this washington game right it's frustrating obviously they they got out hustled by washington in the, in the first half and they won because they steamrolled them in the third quarter but because of that like joe said he's like we got to work on a couple of things we worked in practice and part of it is definitely joe not wanting to call out his team or not wanting to say yeah they fucking suck these guys stink like because that's just not who he is as a coach right he's a player's coach handled things behind the scenes we'll work it out ourselves we don't want to cause that public drama but a part of it is genuinely like Having games like this, and Joe talked a lot about expectations, uh, and Joe said, like, the Wizards are a good team, which, Joe, come on, you can't fool us all. But, like, the the, the concept of having expectations going into a game ruins the game to a point. He, he was basically making the point of, like, going into a game expecting to blow a team out leaves the door open for the other team to ruin your expectations, and you're caught off guard, and then you get caught with your pants down, which is what happened. And so he, he was, like, stressing the importance of going into these games playing your ball and letting what happens happens rather than going in expecting something and having to fight your way back. But at the same time, when you do have to fight your way back, it prepares you for games where you're inevitably going to have to do that in the playoffs. So as much as it's frustrating and as much as you don't want it, you would like to see them blow out every team. That's just not the reality of the situation. Like I wrote in my article from this morning, like it's not a two case sim, right? It's not just, this is their overall. This is their overall. It's not a predetermined winner. Like 
shit happens. Literally, like my whole article, I wanted to tweet this today, but I forgot. My whole article from this morning could have been retitled Celtics lose, Celtics almost lose. Shit happens. Like that, that's effectively what it is. Like, as much as it sucks and you don't want to see it become a trend, they're eight and two in the last <laughs> games. And we said they've been playing bad. So the fact that they've been able to figure it out when they've been going through some of these lulls, I think is a good thing. And again, I stand by this. And if you everyone would like to get mad at me, uh, if it comes back to bite me in the ass. I truly believe that this is as simple as we're fucking done. Give us a break for a few for a cup for a week or so. Um, and we'll see what happens post all-star break. Uh, and again, if you want my prediction now, I think they'll start to play like this again, end of March into April heading into the playoffs because they're once again, going to be like, fuck, just get us to the postseason, get us there, get us there, get us there. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with actually having to battle in a close game, but it's just, the concerning part to me is when the lapses happen defensively. Like, I just don't like that. And, and to their credit yesterday, they came out of the half and they were like, that's enough of that. And they only allowed their uh, 16 points. Sorry. Well, in the third I quarter. Think for what it's worth, I think in terms of why it's happening, I don't think you should be. And I mean, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. Like, I understand why you feel that way. And I can like, it makes sense. But I feel like the same laps that we've been seeing in recent years offensively where they're just going to hero ball mode is the same thing as defensive lapses. It's just laziness because they're bored. I'm not saying that's an excuse, but I, I don't think you should weigh one more than the other because it's, it's defense. I think it's the same mindset of we're bored. We're not trying. Like, I, I don't like, why, why do you think that the defense is more concerning? They've clearly showed that when they lock in, they can lock in. It's just a matter of boredom well i don't think we've seen a whole lot of lazy offense this year there have been times where it comes up and you're like why did tatum take 13 threes when he only made two like that kind of thing you can point at but for the most part i don't think as a team they've really fallen into that trap defensively that is wholeheartedly an effort thing in a focus thing to your point but there's also like an offensive wrinkle where some days you're just not going to make shots. And I think that's more likely than the entire opposing team being on fire, which is the other end of the spectrum of the you're having an off night. They're having a fire night. I think the off nights are for, far more likely than just getting killed, like no matter what on defense, like defense, you can muck things up and you can be in control of that. So when Washington's hanging 71 on you in a in a game, it's like in the first half, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't love it. I don't love when they're scoring 71 and they're only up four at the half uh, the game before. Like, it's just like, I don't know. Take advantage of the great offense. Capitalize I, on I, it. I don't disagree with you, but like. This isn't playoff I, time. This is I, Yeah, as much as it sucks, it's like, it's going to happen. Joe Mazzou said last night, he's like, I'm like, it's going to happen again. Like, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to yell at them to stop it. Like, it's a natural thing. He, what was the quote? I want to find it. Um why you look? Put he goes, I found it. He said, it's human nature. I'm assuming like, yeah, I'm sure they're not waking up every day saying I can't wait to attack every single second of the day. I'm sure they go through small moments of that. But I think as a whole, our team mindset has to be we got to earn the win, regardless of who we're playing, Um, which is like there are days I wake up and I don't want to write like there. I'm sure there's days when you wake up and don't want to go to work. Like as much as you say they're paid millions of dollars, you do like they they're humans. I know, but they're humans. Like there's going to be days where they're, they're just like fuck, for stupid. Like I don't and they can also be physically tired. Yeah. There, there's so much shit that goes into it. And because they, you back they're, to back people. Yeah. For, for, because they make all this money, you expect them to be fucking robots. Like, the reality is shit happens and as much as you can get mad at me for saying that like shit does happen like it just no it, just it happens does. so well, that's what uh, i was I'm, saying I, like yeah on offense you're gonna have shit happens days more i think on offense you're gonna have more shit happens days than defense that that is my point. why though because you're more in control of the effort you give on defense yeah but when i say shit, the measure of success but when i sh say shit happens days i don't mean oh you're just not making shots you're trying i mean shit happens days and there's gonna be days where they're just bored and they're not trying as hard like that it shit happens there's days i'm lazy as fuck and i write one thing because shit happens and i'm just like i'm down to the dumps i'm fucking like out of it there's gonna be days where that happens and if anything that affects defense more because you can have a shit happens day play lazy offense and still make the shot but you can't have a shit happens day and still play good defense because you're not focused and so i think the shit happens days show up on defense more because that's like all that matters and to your credit like to your point like it's gonna affect it and it's gonna show up yeah, I mean, I just, I that's not how I was interpreting that. I was just like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. fluky things, this shit happens. Which, uh, speaking of fluky things, Jordan Poole, 11 first quarter points after scoring nothing on Wednesday's game was not fun.
Well, 19 in the first half, zero in the second. So they, they shut that down real quick. <laughs> Burn pool. Definition of ass. Um, yeah, no, no, like massive final thoughts. I just wanted to be clear. Like, I don't think this team sucks and I think they're actually excellent. And I just wish they would not have these things happen in a, in a big, big moment. That's all. Which, I mean, yesterday is not a big moment against the Wizards. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, I, is that what you're referring you just, to? Which obviously you not. see it happen and you kind of worry. You're like, well, this could happen in the playoffs. And I would like that not to happen. Sure. It's fine. I, I understand what you're saying. I don't disagree. I just, shit happens. And I believe that and it sucks, but it does. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was going to pull up a thread of, spider-verse comparisons but i don't know if it got taken down i can't find it and i definitely retweeted it so i think it's gone Damn. Uh, unfortunately so they we, we're not gonna be able to uh yeah go over that but uh instead we can move on to me getting angry some more mm. um pull it up i'm sorry we got a comment today and it said funny how whenever cornet has a bad game jack completely skips over his stat line notice this multiple times Yet when Kata has genuinely solid games, there's a need to find something negative no matter how irrelevant. For example, stat padding because he grabs, grabs his own misses, which is a fucking joke we make you moron. Which, funnily enough, Wait, stops what, fast. What was that? I'm sorry. I got an important message. <clears throat> you want me to start the comment over? <laughs> no, no, just the last part. Just the very, very yeah. last. The joke that we make. For example, stat padding because he grabs his own misses. Oh, uh, that's a joke. Yeah, that's a And, and also, joke. also... Also relevant because he's missing fucking layups when he does that, so it's not a good. I mean, respect thing. the hustle. I respect um, that he's getting yeah, his own misses. Fine. Yeah, respect. Uh, which, funnily enough, stops fast break points going the other way. Yeah, no shit, because he misses four layups. You moron. Cornette is seven foot two and couldn't grab a single board in eleven minutes. Yet no comment or analysis whatsoever. Once again, just like when Boston blew at the Grizzlies by forty, and Cornette was the only player with a negative plus minus. Why the fuck do you care so much about a third string big man? You're a weird mother. Like, the, the weirdest thing that Celtics fans do. It's, it doesn't make any... I was talking to Bobby Manning about this last night. Like, he played 11 minutes! 11! What, what is wrong with you? He was a positive plus minus against the Wizards in a game they won by four. He was a plus four. What is wrong with you? The best part of this <laughs> is, like, that commenter was like, you guys didn't talk about the stat line. What do I always say to you about Luke Cornette? The, his job is for no one to notice. Oh, I physically God. did not notice whether he was good or bad yesterday. He is a third string center. That is his job. Anything extra where you're like, wow, that guy ruled is great. <laughs> Dude. And Kate is good. Like, I'm not saying Kate is a bad player. He he's, has promise. He's, he's just, just not as raw. good as Luke Cornet because he's a yeah, he, he raw. He's defensively out of position. It's, sometimes. it's either for oh my worth. god, Kata rules, or oh, he really hurt them today. Or exactly, he didn't but play well on defense, or he fouled a lot. It's not people, like oh, he was good, or I didn't notice him. But people only notice the extreme. So they only notice when Kate is really good. And that's all they like to talk about. When Cornette is just consistently solid, they don't care. And for what it's worth, Cornette's not a perfect player. He's a third string no. fucking big for a reason. He gets cooked on the perimeter when he's out there. Uh, he's not a three point shooter. He's a good screener, but he's got, he's, he's he not the be best. A three point shooter. I stand I know, by he's that. He's not the, he's not the best finisher around the rim. Like he's flawed. And that's why he's a third string big and only plays 11 fucking minutes. What is wrong with you? Like, like 11 minutes. Also, you know what, Sam? You want to know how mad I was? Let's, let's take a fucking look at the footage. Shall we? For what it's worth. Pulled it up. As far as I know, as far as I have gone so far, and and obviously I, I was doing some of this while we were on here. Luke Cornett, by the oh, way, 68% from the field. This year. Yeah. Sh shut the fuck up, you morons. Not you, but you know what I'm saying. Um, For what it's worth. Again, I haven't been able to. Five points again. That's pretty good. I haven't gone no, over all of it. the um, all of the things. I'm pretty sure the Wizards got one, maybe two, but I couldn't find a video for the second one. One or two offensive rebounds when Cornette was on the floor, which realistically is the only thing like that matters when you're talking about a big getting rebounds, right? Because on on the other end, it's just because he's playing defense or boxing out, and so his teammate can grab it. You know what I'm saying? You want to see the one mm -hmm. offensive rebound that the Wizards got uh, when Luke Cornette was on the floor? Let's take Regardless a look. Regardless of what my answer is, you will show me. Of course I am. That was rhetorical. <laughs> this is the one offensive rebound I could find that the Wizards got when Luke was on the floor. Let's take a look Let's and see, see if it was Luke's fault. Let's see here. What happened? Trying oh, to avoid three driving. seconds. Oh, he blocks the fucking shot and it bounces on the ground. Are you kidding me? And now, Jack, I don't know if you're familiar with the snatch block. <laughs> what are we 
<laughs> Maybe hold like, the ball when you block it, you big shut, dumb idiot. Stop, Seven foot two for gonna, nothing. Stop, stop, stop. I appreciate your sarcasm, but when we're dealing with these commenters, I'm not going to allow it because they're going to believe what you're saying. This is like, like, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that their problem with the Luke Cornette thing. And sorry, I don't even think he got credited for that block because then this was also a Luke. Oh, this might have been the same play. But regardless, like, th- like, his whole job is just to play solid defense and be in the right position. Like he's not going to put up stats. He played 11 minutes. Are you complaining? Cause he didn't score. If, if that's what you're complaining about, it, it, you're basically advocating for the Celtics to get Luke Cornette shots, which is just not what he does. It is just the weirdest disposition in, in the world being like sitting there complaining about Luke Cornette. And I think shout out Sean Seiler. He said, um, maybe they didn't mention the third rotation big because he's the third rotation big. Maybe that could be it could be a factor here. Sean, uh, you have one in Pop Nito. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. And they most definitely give Kata props when he plays well. Have you seen how many thumbnails Kate has been in this year? How many's Cornette been in? Tell me. Someone do the math. Maybe you won in the Raptors game. What the fuck are we doing? A uh, lot of Patriots fans come. I mean, listen, we appreciate you guys listening, and you're entitled to your opinion. Sure. That's what it's worth. I'm just getting angry. I don't like you're entitled Get angry. to your opinion, but just don't sit here and say Jack fucking does this and this and this. I didn't bring it up because he wasn't relevant in the game because he, he he did his job and that's all he did on the floor. And Nimi's a fine player and I praise him when he does good things. But because he is such a raw player, he either does really good things or really bad things. And I think it's relevant Correct. to point it out when Luke Cornette got cooked in the playoffs last year or when we were playing the Hawks. That was all we talked about. We're like, yeah, you probably can't really play this guy because he gets run around. It's just. They put him in a position where he's not in that position a lot more this year. Uh, that shit got me I so just got mad. The same treatment. I I have oh, friends man. that would be like, "Why do you like this guy?" I'm like, "He fucking rules. He's out there to not be noticed. That's it." And I feel like Tice did way more cool stuff, and you would notice him that way. They were very. I don't know. He's just solid. Started on a team that went to the Eastern Conference. Probably should have won a championship. What do you? That's a- Cornette's a good player. I mean, so is Kane. They're both, they're both fine players for what they are. I like, and truly, the fact that we even have to talk about this so much is insane. Like, like this, guys, they are third string big men. And honestly, once Tillman gets used to the fucking schemes and stuff, he's probably better than both of them. So he's probably just going to play. Uh, but until then, expect more of the same. Expect more coordinate minutes because they're good for each other. Rock solid. They push each other um, to be better. I don't dislike Kata. I, I don't get where this all of you Kata from. people. You can be also, like, listen, Kata sitting it... there thinking about Luke Cornett. They're, he's just using him as motivation. It's going to be in the back of his brain this summer when he's grinding. He's going to be like, all these commenters say Luke Cornett sucks. Yet Joe's playing him over me. I got to get better. Why? Why does it have to be if I say something negative about a player that I hate them? You do. Like, why is that? You the told thing? me in confidence that you cannot stand him. Well, that means you hate Tatum. I, well, that's see, I'm not, I'm not closeted about that one. Tell me you hate Tatum. Tell me right now you hate Jason Tatum. I don't straight hate face. Tatum. That's what I fucking thought. It, I it's, think it's he should be narrative. held to a high standard because he's the best. It's it's ridiculous. Anyways, I that got me so mad. Let's go to the email so I can breathe. Actually, I'm not going to be able to breathe because I have to read essays. You want but, me to read them? <laughs> let's check it out. No, I got it. I got it. I've I've got the the fifty five burgers thing going on, but first let's get, let's go to the Chick-fil-A's Impop Nito wheel. Uh, don't you worry, I already had it today. Um, <clears throat> let's see who's winning some popcorn today. We got four entrants. Um, spin the wheel. Let's see. Pull it up. Let's see who's it gonna be. I I need to order me some popcorn. I haven't eaten any in a while. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Ian. Uh, Ian hit us in an email, said what's popping in the email, and and we're going to read it in a few minutes, but uh, you want yourself some popcorn. So, again, make sure to comment what's popping on this video, or send us an email with what's popping in the subject line, um, or just in the email, for a chance to win some Pop Nito popcorn. You'll win a $10 gift card uh, as long as you email us. So, Ian, hit us with another email, hbtcpod at gmail.com, with your name and phone number included. Uh, and with that, we will get you uh, a $10 gift card to Impopnito. We'll hook you up. So we appreciate you for tuning in. We appreciate you for emailing us, saying what's popping. Again, comment what's popping on the video for a chance to win a $10 gift card. But without further ado, I was just about to pause and edit it out, but you made it back just in time. So. I thought I was gone. <laughs> I w- so I'm, I'm unplugged. 
and I went to plug in when I lagged and the thing turned red and I was like, this is a catastrophe. I have, I have no safety net. I'm yep. dead. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I feel busted for just long enough and now we can go to the email. So RJ first, Sam unleashes an analytics monster. Oh dear. Let's Stop see. calling him Sam. Use last names. Oh, wow. I, I didn't even, is it? No, no, no. He's talking about you in this uh, one. I was going to say. Yeah, you asshole. <laughs> He's so sorry, yelling, I just, RJ. <laughs> I just took my internet out on RJ. But <laughs> all of you that call him just Sam, use his last name. Sam. Hauser, Hauser, Hauser. But he's talking about you. Um, Evening, guys. Tonight's game against the Hawks was, well, a win. Not pretty. Not especially dominant. Didn't crush them. Never let, uh, But never let them get the upper hand either. Guess we missed having Lamar Stevens. Having watched your video piece uh, on Xavier Tillman Sr. and browsing his stats, it looks like a good playoff pickup for Boston, not just in terms of a better third or fourth start, uh, center, but with his defensive skills at muscling larger centers around until uh, he gives us a taller version of Grant at the five, quote unquote, uh, albeit without the three ball. He also looks like a decent pa passer. So Brad, uh, go Brad. Good luck, Lamar. On the analytics front, I read Sam's excellent piece on the two for ones uh, for Celtics blog. First, it takes a man of great for courage and fortitude to agree with the data and say that Scott was right. My hat is off to you for that, Sam. Uh, your research, along with Coach Mazzulla's preference for winning the shots attempted margin uh, each night, shed some light on a question I put to you earlier about the historical scoring back in the early 60s. If a two for one is good and a three for two is good, then the logical conclusion is, quote, more shots attempted in the game is better than fewer shots attempted. Uh, Red Auerbach and the rest of the coaches back then played analytics ball, but just without the analytics. I'll be curious to see what other moves Brad makes by the time you read this. Be well, RJ. The answer is none. Actually, Jane the answer is Springer. In <laughs> Jane Springer. <laughs> um, yeah, Sorry, thanks, RJ. Yelled. <laughs> Apologize to RJ. This is proof that we don't read the emails before we pull them up. Mm -hmm. We just cook. Uh, RJ trades popping. Great live stream at the trade deadline, guys. It was informative and fun. Thank you. Uh, I love the Celtics bench pickups because they are young guys with defensive chops and aren't just half year flyers. Agree. Tillman is unlikely ever to be a good shooter, but he seems to have a solid screen and passing game to complement his bulk and defensive skills. Tillman gives the Celtics a better option than KP for defending big bulk centers. Great. Watching Springer's 2023 Summer League Reel, his playmaking game is similar to. Uh, in style to J.D. Davidson's with quick drives and finishing at the rim, but he seems to take the responsibility more seriously than J.D. ever did, i.e. fewer turnovers. He doesn't have a three-point range, but given his free throw percentage, I'll hold out hope for development on that front. Well, watch out, but when you say that, commenters will think you think he sucks. Uh, I'm not rejoicing to us uh, to seeing Bandon go, sucks. yes, I'm a fan of upside, uh, nor Stevens, who seemed like a committed pro. But I'm not shedding tears either as the C's have added usable skills and youth and contract flexibility. I think the Celtics are better going uh, both going into this year's playoffs and the future without overspending against the salary cap or their draft capital. Be well, RJ. Yeah, we're fans of the, the moves. We in on the trip. earlier. That's Big. my favorite part is that they're kind of long term <laughs> solutions. Like you can keep these guys around if you like them. It's great. I'm in. And they probably won't cost much to keep on their next contracts, too. Which Correct. Is which is very useful. So uh, hopefully they pan out for them. Next one, Ian. Uh, Ian Saad, who did win What's Poppin'. The winner. The winner. Uh, quick all-star talk. Hey, gents, what's poppin'? Life happens, so I haven't caught many actual games to comment on, so this uh, will be less season-centric. First, we have our all-stars and coaches set. Can we talk about the ridiculousness that is dot coaching being announced the, quote, East coach after go coaching three games going one and two and a solid one of five at the time of writing this? Yeah, with the team overall. For, uh, we all know why it's him with Joe being ineligible, but as the agent of chaos that I am, I want them to name the Bucks coach uh, that got them the second in the East. Bring back Griffin. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, let's break this down into sections, I guess. Okay. It is kind of funny. It is very funny. I'm in, me. man. I love Doc. I love that Doc has become a meme. I love that he's made the Bucks ass, and he doesn't even want this. He's, he was like, listen, I'm going to give – Adrian Griffin, the bonus. I'm going to give him the ring. And then, you know, I'm missing out a damn vacation. That, that was Doc's take. I don't really know what the solution would be. This doesn't really happen that often. So I don't know if they need to put in a fail safe. Maybe this will make him like go back and be like, listen, if this happens, then it'll go to the next. Maybe there should be a fan vote for the coaching. I don't know. <laughs> no, because it would just be. What if you I just had that. like the most. <laughs> out of touch coaches like do it you should have the coach of the worst team in the each conference coach the yeah 
Yeah, because they they deserve like a little bit of fun. You know, it'd be crazy. That'd be Monty Williams versus Pop this year. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be that bad. <clears throat> That'd be funny. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe you just do lifetime achievement stuff like Pop and Spoelstra. Or maybe it's Coach it. of the Year. Uh, uh, from the season previous. Yeah, year. but there's but only then, one. <clears throat> uh, yeah, true. I don't know. It, 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 or maybe it, just make it so you can coach if you are good back to back years. <clears throat> yeah, just whoever's best to do it. Uh, anyway, because now if Milwaukee is first next year, that staff can't coach. Yeah. <laughs> and have to be second. Um, <clears throat> next thing for me and JV and now he's in the dunk contest. I see him more as a great in-game dunker, uh, contested dunker and not a show dunker. Maybe he proves me wrong. Either way, I'd love to have a true all-star competing in it. I know it won't ever happen, but do we think about uh, having a defender in the dunk contest? Watching JV's career dunk highlights is his best this work. That's what I said. Uh, are all massive posters. So why not make it a real posterizer product, which is more hype than jumping over a parked car? Uh, sorry, Blake. Love you, buddy. For <clears throat> Maybe for safety, make it slam ball with protecting padding everywhere. <laughs> Just an effort to make All-Star Weekend more entertaining and truly competitive. Um This is so dangerous. <laughs> That's just way too dangerous. What if you just put like... Wemby there. Just every year. Wemby would die. <laughs> He'd kill He'd him. Okay. <clears throat> no, too dangerous. Cool idea. Way too dangerous. Yeah, well, you know, you know, if there was like a dunk on Wemby contest, everybody would be lying up. Like every single superstar in the league would be doing it. Cause remember when Jock came back for like five seconds this year and all he wanted to do was dunk on Wemby and he did it. I mean, it's kind of not fair to Wemby, but sometimes you got to take one for the team, earn everyone's respect. Just right? dunk on like, whoever's leading the league in blocks at that time. <laughs> guys are like trying not to block shots like the week before the All Star break. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! <laughs> they're just pulling their hands back. <laughs> yeah, Derek White leads the league in blocks at one year. He's just out they're, there they're literally blocked. like doing snatch blocks, but like dunking the ball home, so it's not a block. <laughs> God. Uh, all right. Uh, throwaway comment before the real reason for this email would making all-star game matter. Like it doesn't baseball make it more competitive Would teams want to win home court in the finals Would they even care because they don't care about home court. I think for what it's worth having the all-star game mattered. Baseball is dumb as hell. <laughs> uh, I don't I think, think it's dumb, matter. but I do think they should do something to make it worth competing. I think it should be like smaller games and have it be a tournament. Like, three on threes or some shit like that, where you can have fun with it. Like I kind of like what they've done with the shooting stars thing, even though that was the inside. <laughs> skills I agree. And mm-hmm. I mean, listen, that was the best of all the events beforehand anyway, but the fact that they're like making it a competitive thing where you're playing with a squad is kind of fun. It doesn't even yeah. have to be like all Celtics it could be all Duke guys. It can be, you know, number one picks like they have, whatever it may be. It could be fun. Well, just, <laughs> just split up the all-star teams and the teams of three and have them go. You have it. You could have a draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that'd be real fun. Um, yeah, I I think the baseball thing. I don't think it should matter like that. Anyways, finally, what's your favorite NBA shorts slash uni era? I.e., booty shorts of the seventies and or and one gowns of the nineties. I'm partial to longer shorts of the nineties to this day for my own comfort. I don't know. I don't really have a strong mm. opinion. I'm sure you probably do. I don't really care. Uh, I think today's short lengths, if that's the question, are fine in terms of uniforms. I I don't know. Sam Sam is far more opinionated on this than I. I just like the basketball. I don't really care what they're wearing. Uh, which um, I take. I like the current length of the shorts. I think it's perfect. It's not too long I agree. where it looks stupid or too short where it looks I, uncomfortable. I do I like the shorter shorts, but just not the short. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want them up on your thighs, but like, I like a Give little like on, a little above the knees, I, I think is good. I, I don't really like the baggy shorts. Uh, I think those are weird to watch. But uh, was there another part I of that the, was just the shorts? Uh, uni era, I, I think. Um, oh, but, unis? Uh, anything that's not right now. Not Nike. Yeah. <clears throat> Shocker. Who could have seen Sam's answer? Come could have answered for you. <laughs> Yesterday was a fucking travesty. We didn't talk I about know. that. They pumped so you don't know. There's nothing greater than when I go on Twitter and I search up what the Celtics are wearing for uniforms and I see the home whites. Now, yesterday, I first saw the city editions in the morning and I was devastated as one should be because it's uh, bad integrity for the game, if you will. But then Jack sends me an update where they're wearing Valid. the home whites. No, I'm, not, I'm not taking blame for this. I sent you the correct account. I sent you the correct thing. No, no okay, that, yeah, yeah. that was okay. correct. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying that was an update I from mean- the account. 
Yes. And then I turn on the game and they're wearing the city editions. <laughs> terrible. I do think Cam was right, by the way. But terrible. Yeah. Disaster. Please stop mm. making me look at the wrong jerseys. Mm. I will say at least the city editions are the correct color to be worn at home. But just quit fucking with it. Even, mm. like, take the Celtics out of it. Miami. You made the perfect city editions. You could have rebranded to the Miami Vice. You had three different colorways of that. A white one, black, and I think they also had pink. Just run with it. Just, like, you don't need to keep pumping out new stuff. I know money is the goal. But, I don't know. Play the hits. Mm -hmm. And for what and for those wondering, Cam's theory headache, was that they couldn't, make, uh, they couldn't make the other jerseys quick enough. For the Celtics or Tillman the or something, or, and but then they had it done. I don't know. It, it was weird. <clears throat> Anyways, um, thanks for taking the time for this longer email. Love the work, and even when I can't get involved, that uh, gets me through drives, dog walks, and even some workouts. Best Ian Sods. If you're listening hey, to us you. during a workout, run faster, go harder, train faster. Go, yeah, go, think of what go, I would go, say. Go. Get going, Ian. Hell yeah! Or, no, no, no. Eat workout more, so you can eat more calories. There you go. There's the. Bathroom. That's why. Right. This is why we play. <laughs> Last email from RJ. What's popping? Sometimes I gotta remind myself. Happy Saturday, guys. Celtics fans are a special Saturday. breed. Our team scores 130 points. Two starters score over 30. Uh, with a third landing 20 points. They have the best record in the league. Uh, team managed to say uh, managed his health remarkably well. Knock on wood. Uh, and we gr uh, grouse because they didn't squash the Wizards like a bug. To quote it's the fact. late great owner of the Oakland Raiders, Al Davis, just win, baby. Friday's win over the Wizards reminded me of the game one loss against the Heat last year. In a game the Celtics won three of the four quarters, the Heat blew us out in the third and went on to win 123-116. Yeah, I know, the Wizards are not the Heat, and this is February, not May, but a win is still a win. I do want to see the Celtics use game like Friday's uh, against a weak opponent to buy time off for the starters and more court time for the reserves, but I will tide myself over with another victory, even though the Celtics didn't look especially sharp for the entire game, because winning when you kind of suck, that's what champions do, too. Be well, RJ. Well, that's kind of what we kind we of talked stumbled about. into earlier. <laughs> I will also say, as much as it sucks and it's frustrating because we don't know their actual mindset, I think it would be the funniest fucking thing if the Celtics walk into these games against bad teams and go, hey, guys, let's just kind of like be meh, and then we'll just fucking we'll turn it on. Just fuck with them. We're just going to fuck with them. <laughs> well, actually, if they were smart, what they would do is, hey, guys, let's go down by like 15. We kind of like, no, no, no. We notify like some loved ones. We're like, hey, <laughs> house on Celtics money line when we're down. And then you I make money. Be, I don't think that'd be legal. <laughs> oh, no. You don't have to tell anybody. You can still do it. Oh, man. I think it was. Uh, so there was a point of RGZ I wanted to address. I forget what it was. And I apologize. Oh, yes. Uh, very selfish of the starters. Stat pad shit. Maybe play well enough for the unfortunate True. lobster lads to get some run. They were all there yesterday. True. They made the trip for nothing. It's fucked. Think about the yeah. carbon emissions from that drive down from Maine. Because you know they're not flying them down. Oh, man. Which is That's actually funny. green friendly. It's better to fly than drive, I suppose. Or drive than fly. True. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, ball going hoop. That's what I got for you. Ball going hoop. All right. Let's move on over to the NBA section. Uh, let me add the timestamp, then I will bring up the standings as we do every up. pod. Uh, oh, I need to check something. Please. Keep keep going. I need. We may have a big time. Well, they <laughs> they were in a game with the Clippers. I know they were and in. And don't tell, tell me. me. I'll find it. I don't know. I haven't looked. They yet. have perished. They were oh. close though. <laughs> Closer than the Celtics. Hmm. That they were well. One twelve. The real takeaway from this is, hey, look, the Clippers struggled against a bad team too, but they won. <laughs> You say bad team. I say winners of the deadline. You know what it is? That cancer Cade came back today. The what? Cancer Cade. Why is that the nickname? Why is that what we're running with? Do I, because, because they were four and six without him. For the Pistons, oh, oh. that's like like championship level performance. Dude, I thought you were using it as a noun, not a adjective. I thought you, you thought you, I thought that it was this new nickname, like like uh like Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Like I thought you were calling him. Oh, can't I was like, what the fuck could. is happening? Yeah. Anyways, yeah, he doesn't standings. have like he doesn't have cancer, so you can like label him a cancer. Stop. I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> Next, let's look at the NBA standings. <clears throat> Celtics, despite the narrative, have now won three games in a row which is weird to look at. They're 8-2 in their last 10, which we think is – that's the bar. Ass. That's 
that's the bar. No, eight and two is is the bar. Have some fucking shame. Nine and one is good. What, go out there and earn your salary. <laughs> Repay your salary. Cavs are nine and one in their last ten. Eight in a row. Cavs are really good. Um, they have taken a one and a half game leads over the Bucks, who are in third now. Four and six in the last ten in shambles. Celtics still up um, five games on everybody. By you know what I didn't? Yes, uh, this is what I said earlier. Like, <laughs> um, you know the forty twenty rule. Yeah, the Bucks are about to not hit it. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy bucks, i didn't realize cats. they had 19 losses that is nuts the Cavs are gonna hit it potentially in the, without the bucks anyways Knicks 33 and 19 8 and 2 in their last 10 sixers shambles 2 and 8 uh in their their last 10 they're falling off a cliff without Embiid. which i mean shit it makes sense when your team's right? built for Embiid and then he's not there kind of tough tough P- pacers they, four and six to, um sixers lost to like a pretty bad team if i'm not the mistaken. hawks hawks yeah. yesterday yeah, yeah that's not great was. They, well, I mean, their last five or four have been Nets, Mavs, Warriors, Hawks. They're not exactly the best. They play the Wizards today. Let's see how they fare. Uh, our um, Wizards. Anyways. <laughs> our Wizards. Pacers, five and five in their last ten. Heat, four and six. Magic and Bulls, little upswing, six and four for them. Uh, and then the rest of the NBA, pretty bad. Pistons, though, four and six in the last ten. Respect them. Jack. <laughs> we have double digits. We have a 10 game losing streak. Let's fucking no, go. Hornets. Hornets. Hornets watch. Hornets watch. This is oh, the ultimate horn. There great. would be nothing. How many games are left? They have uh they have what? 31 games left. So they could easily do it. They could easily break the Pistons losing streak if they are all the way ass. Uh if Grant Williams was part of the most lengthy losing streak in league history. That would fucking rule. Well, unfortunately, they do have uh, the Grizzlies tonight. So that's all right. That's all right. Big game. Big the, game. On, this is this is Pistons Wizards level of must see basketball. I would. I want Grant to play super well in Charlotte, but them still lose. That that's my ideal world. They yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to see him 20. suck. But it is funny I, when his team. I want to see him average like twenty fucking points for no reason, and <laughs> them still lose twenty in a row. <laughs> Grant's like doing shot creator shit. He's just not like they can't win. That clip you sent me of like the last possession he had in the Mavericks uniform. That was also pull like, it up, pull it up, pull up the clip. That was pull super bogus. That was I'll two seconds on the two seconds on the shot clock, and people are bashing him for it. That's people so are not talking enough about uh, our Pistons almost climbing past the Wizards. Uh, I know. I said this last night. Wins. They are they are right there. The Charlotte's ten wins. Pistons yeah, are back. They're, they're there. Um, hold on. P- the Pistons things. might legitimately make the leap this summer to where they're not the Pistons anymore. <laughs> Sam for the third year in a row. <laughs> I'm gonna be right one of these years. Here's Grant. Uh, this is his last, last possession. Uh, I don't really blame. There was him six for this. seconds. Yeah. Well, yeah, but like he got <laughs> shut off. What? How? Like he he's stuck. I think he, he stepped out move. of bounds. He can't. Yeah, move. they said he's out of stuck. bounds. I also, for what it's worth, I also you can't see it. It doesn't look like he went out of bounds. <laughs> like he stepped back out of bounds. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, whatever. Anyways, um, he was so not yeah, very close on the attempt. No, maybe the whistle startled him. That's the Eastern Conference, Western Conference: Timberwolves, Clippers, uh, Nuggets, Thunder. Still battling for that top seed. Thunder six and four in the last ten. They're a little bit struggling. Same with the the Timberwolves. Clippers eight and two. Nuggets seven and three. Suns and Kings, both seven and three in the last 10. Suns riding a three game win streak. Um, four teams in the West have a chance to hit 40 before 20, which is impressive. Mavs have won four in a row. Um, the Grant stench is gone. <laughs> they just blew out the uh, uh, Thunder today without Grant. <laughs> yeah, I saw super cool lobs from Luca. <laughs> did, um, did the new guys play? Okay, so PJ Washington did play. Yep, their first basket, gotcha. him and Gafford. It was both alley oops from Luca. Oh my God, Gafford had nineteen and nine, and PJ had fourteen and five. Imagine being Daniel Gafford, <laughs> and you just kind of show up, and it's like, oh my God, yeah. I don't have to play with Jordan Poole anymore. Yeah, dude, he's or getting PJ all the Washington. Lob. Can we? One sec. I want to go through and look at how many of Daniel Gafford's baskets were assisted by Luca, because that dude must be on top of the fucking world. Well, the, the, you want to talk? I mean, we talk about Porzingis being a rescue puppy. This is a rescue puppy from like a terrible home, not just a rescue puppy. <laughs> but let's see. Let's let's look at Daniel Gafford. It's gonna get demonetized, but I want to look at Daniel Gafford's baskets. Let's see how much this, how happy this guy is. Look at him. He's like, yep, yeah, that the first finally. One. Wait Daniel Gafford's a damn good player too, man. Oh wait, let's see. 
<laughs> yeah, let's go. Oh my god, he's just playing pass. football out there, making <laughs> catches. Oh my in god, <laughs> this is crazy, man. Look at look at him. He's like, oh, oh, oh this, this is a, a, this is technically a Luca. Oh no, this is a hustle. What a bucket, Big boy. How's that? Andrew foul? Gafford's a good player, man. He was just stuck in fucking <laughs> Washington. Uh, look at him run the floor. Josh Green type. Ooh, we'll behind him. Oh, look at him, dude. He is on top of the fucking world right now. I I'm wish a fan of these him. Mavs jerseys, by the way. Just wear yeah, them on the Mavs. road. Look at him. <laughs> this dude is just he's, he's like, this is what happens when the, the main player passes the ball. It's like, finally, he's like, guys, in his mind, he's like, oh, I'm probably not getting the ball here. And he's like, oh, wait, it's coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> look at how unready he was look how used to jordan pool he is ready look at him like all right i'll get the rebound and he's like oh he yeah <laughs> he has this is like a couple volleyball taps for him this game he's good man david gaffer's a damn good player it's like okay oh, Kyrie this time oh yeah, yeah. i'll shoot it but i'm ready I'm Kyrie here. Miss. what a bucket man <clears throat> big body good for gafford they really he's, he's a good them. player sheesh all right um anyways out west mavs now six and four in the last 10 lakers also six and four uh jazz four and six warriors six and four turning it around kuminga has been ridiculous he's averaging like 20 points over his last 15 and then the rockets grizzlies trailblazers and spurs kind of suck the rockets at least seven in a row grace. they have and the rockets have fallen from grace they they were they've been bad <laughs> poor guys <laughs> um yeah cool uh Who's the biggest surprise for you in each conference? This is the random. biggest surprise is probably Minnesota. Yeah, sure. It's going into the season, we didn't have them above the play in, I don't think. They I don't even know if I had them in. You had them out, I had them just in. Yeah. So they're definitely the biggest surprise for me. In the East, I don't know if we thought I mean, I didn't think the Knicks would finish this high because I think the East is pretty on par team. though. I don't know if I thought Cleveland would be this good. I lost a lot of respect for them in the playoffs last year when they got killed. So they they have had this record despite uh, Mobley and Darius Garland missing extended amounts of time. I will say, though, we both had this exact top eight in the East in whatever order. Like, it was so clearly going to be this. Orlando was a surprise. Like, they've cooled <laughs> off, and they're probably right about where we thought they'd be. Yeah, they'll, they'll be <clears throat> fine. All right. Biggest um, surprise in general, Pistons. Thought they'd be better. <clears throat> Sorry. That's a tough one. All right. Uh, let's recap some of the moves from the trade deadline. We don't have to go too in-depth because we've talked a lot of trade stuff, but um, <clears throat> let's do it this way. Let's do each of our top three favorite trades briefly from the deadline sure. and then rock with that. Um, you want to go first? What your favorite trade at the deadline? And, and, and let's be unbiased. Let's not do something like... Yeah, yeah. It, it will, and... Um, Unbiased, like trade for that team. Like you like the trade for them. Okay. Um, hmm. Can it be like pre deadline or you only want deadline? It like, can. Like, okay. Yeah. I, mean, just... I think the OG trade is a good one for the Knicks. Like he's changed Obviously, them, yeah. but sticking to deadline. stuff like this week. Yeah. I think that Hayward trade is going to be good for OKC. That was my one. Yeah. I, I think plan, they man. really didn't have to give up a whole lot. They got a veteran presence, somebody that is a smart player. When he's with the Celtics, he took on a smaller role and was, until he got hurt in the bubble, probably the best guy on that team in that period of time. Mm -hmm. Like, he was playing really great basketball in the bubble. He hasn't had a chance to compete in years because he's been in Charlotte. And I'm sure going to OKC is a nice change of scenery for him. He's probably pumped. So you're probably going to see some good Hayward. Did he play today? Uh, the Thunder. They just got killed oh. by the Mavs. Oh, yeah. He just had it up. I don't think so. I didn't notice him in any of those clips. No Hayward today, no. No Hayward. <clears throat> Not yet, no. Um, that was gonna be my one. I think it'll be a good fit there. Um I think the the Mavs deals were good. We're just watching them. I, I think Washington Gafford, that, that I mean yes, it's really good for them, obviously. Um, but second, to be honest, Bogdanovich for the Knicks is really good. Like he's a really, really underrated player at this point. He can give you 20 on any night. He's a great three point shooter, he'll help their spacing a lot and for as much as he's probably not the best defender, like he's a big body, like like he's not completely a traffic cone. Like I think Correct. he'll be a good player he'll for them. Try. He's not Fournier. Yeah, yeah I, I think he'll be a good player for them. So Andrew, there's your your moment in the sun, uh, I suppose. Phoenix getting Royce O'Neal, good for Phoenix. I think they I needed that happen. Some yeah, help. you know, like that Phoenix team has been Bradley Beal, 
Devin Booker, Kevin Durant making all the money. Eric Gordon took a pay cut to go there. And then everybody else is making pennies. So the fact that they got somebody that wasn't a minimum contract is fantastic for them. And Royce O'Neal is somebody that we've talked about being a potential fit for the Celtics. He's a bit undersized at 6'4 to guard the biggest of players, but he can still hang with wings. He played with Durant in Brooklyn. He's somebody that should already have chemistry there. So I think that he's going to be a good fit with Phoenix and he's going to give them a viable option, whether they want to start him or bring him off the bench. He's someone that they can trust. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And for what it's worth, Suns also got David Roddy, another good player. He's fine Mm -hmm. uh, in Phoenix. I think they did Damian Lee just sign with them or no, he signed with them earlier, but he hasn't played this season. Sorry. I I just saw him not have a number um, on their roster. I was like, wait, did they just add him? No. Uh, Past that. Who else made trade trade deadline stuff? Um, Pat Bev. It's a good Pat trade. Bev. Pat Bev, man. That's good for them. Um, I wanted Pat Bev here, man. Devastated. Mm-hmm. Still tearing up right now. <laughs> uh, uh, I another know. one I liked. <clears throat> yeah. I think Philly. But he heals good for them, even if he's just six around for that season. Maybe that was a weird fine. free guy trade for them, wasn't it? Like, mm-hmm. really thought whoever was going to trade for Buddy Heald would have to give up more. Turns out they didn't, so good for them. It's a good value add. I just don't know if it's going to matter. That's the thing about that trade. Like, I don't really feel like it makes a difference. The thing that's going to make a difference for Philly is if Embiid comes back, not if, you know, they go you know what I like? but he heals. I really, and I'm not usually high on this player when he was in Boston. I really like Dennis Schroeder for the Nets. He's been really good this season. And the Nets need a point guard, and they got a point guard for the rest of the year. Like, yeah, I, I truly work. think... I truly think Schroeder is going to be really good in Brooklyn. I don't know if they've played yet, but I, I think that's a good fit for them. They need somebody who can handle the ball and, and, and lead their team. Um, ben Simmons. He, no, he came off. He's coming off the bench today. He's already at eight and four in the first quarter. So he's, he's I think he's a good player. Ben Speaking, Simmons did start, though. I'm sorry. I forgot about this, and I should have put it on the sheet. Nets. Ben Simmons uh, gotten a little bit of a scuffle the other day. Did you see that? So they were playing the Cavs, and I'm going to find the tweet as I try and speak at the same time. I think Henry showed it to me. So Ben Simmons got into it with, I want to say Jared Jared Allen, Allen. going back and forth. And at the time, do you have the clip? I'm not in the tab. I got it, yeah. Okay, so yes, this is a clip, right? I am looking for (laughs) the context. So yes, when this clip that you're seeing happened the score was cleveland 59 brooklyn 51 five minutes later the score was uh brooklyn 51 cleveland 80 (laughs) so ben simmons is back though i will say jared allen has to be the most like calm guy in the nba (laughs) like this is very out of character if he he sees it is and also those nets jerseys suck really you don't like them i don't mind them do they have well, the stars just... on the side, or are they just... No, it's just black. No, those are boring. They The ones they had with the stars that weren't... They, the black and white ones with the stars that are a mix of the retro look with the red and blue and white looked good. Sure. And also sure. those Cavs uniforms suck. So just bad. Ca- all the Cavs uniforms are kind of yeah, bad. Yeah, they're terrible. They can't win a championship solely for that. But yeah, Ben Simmons is back. Sorry. Uh, last trade that I liked. Monty Morris going to Minnesota is good for them. They were trying to rely on Shake Milton. He didn't give them enough. They traded him away in this deal. Monty Morris has been somebody that at least has proved he can come off the bench and at least score, which is all they're looking for. Minnesota's got Mike Conley. He's been nails for the teams he has played for since leaving Memphis. He was good for Utah last year. He was a barometer for how well Utah had played that year when he was on there, right? They were winning a bunch of games. He gets hurt, and then all of a sudden, they're not good anymore. Minnesota, if he's having an off night, I'm pretty sure it's had a negative effect on them. They need somebody to be able to step up and give them a scoring punch from the guard position if he doesn't have it. And Shake Milton did not have it. He was getting benched. They are putting in uh, McLaughlin instead of him. When they played the Celtics, it was McLaughlin getting those minutes, not Shake Milton. And now they brought in a guy who can just maybe do what Shake Milton couldn't. So Minnesota is already at the top of the conference. This could be another chip to get them up and running again because they have been a bit, you know, mopey 
over the last 10 games. Mm. We shall see. Um, anyways, let's move to the next thing. Uh, potential Pittsburgh expansion, question mark. Uh, Sam, you put this in here. Can you explain what the fuck is going on? Yes. Yeah, so I was just scrolling on Reddit before the show to make sure because Jack put the sheet together. Very gracious of him to do that. Appreciate it. Uh, but I always look to just see if there's any stories that I thought are funny or whatever things we might have missed on Twitter. So I saw this. Pittsburgh is exploring the possibility of adding a pro basketball team. So this is from a local news station there reporting on the very minimal information they have. This is what they had to say. The city of Pittsburgh is exploring whether it could support a professional basketball team. Pittsburgh Sports and Exhibition Authority agreed to pay a consulting firm up to $90,000 for a feasibility study. The study would look at the demand for an NBA or WNBA in Pittsburgh or WNBA team in Pittsburgh. So essentially what they're doing is they're going to kind of put a feeler out, see if people would be interested in this, if it would be worth them putting in all the effort and the funding to do so. And then maybe Pittsburgh would be an expansion city for the NBA. So just kind of an interesting wrinkle. Anytime we think of expansion, it's always Seattle and Vegas. And those are the places that are going to get a team. And it'll probably happen that way. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of strange that Pittsburgh doesn't have a basketball team because they have everything else. Listen, this is the classic. Yeah, I'd like to win the lottery someday. Yeah, yeah, I think I you should. Think I so? think I like this person. There's no fucking way Pittsburgh gets a basketball team. <laughs> not Why right you now. say that? Maybe eventually, but not like. I think this I is think... more of an eventually thing. This is okay, like okay, tomorrow. okay. Sure. Because uh, this is a very, this is like, hey, everyone, what do you think? I just think there are so many better options for a basketball team. Seattle, Vegas, go on. I think Louisville could support a professional Louisville. Basketball. They don't have any pro sports teams. Okay, fine, fine. Take that out. Vancouver, I think, better market. Okay, sure. Get back in Canada. I think you can even extend to Montreal as a better market. You get another Canada. Sure. Too. Get more Canada. <clears throat> um, I think Kansas City could support a basketball team. You got to be careful. That's in uh, Missouri. What do you mean? Dude, geez. You, know, you don't need a Tatum having any kind of oh, yeah. to go home. Well, if they put one in Kansas City. I heard Kansas City hates it. basketball. <laughs> that's Weren't what i mean? heard oh yes yeah of course of course um i think i think i'm missing some uh oh mexico city overseas and I, uh, the, the overseas stuff is weird because everything we we've heard like oh what if like pro sports went overseas and it hasn't happened yet like the nfl has been like kind of like oh maybe we'll do it. we're gonna have games i think there will be i think there'll be one eventually maybe i think mexico city makes sense um i almost think there's not, like more of a possibility they make like a league overseas and they or or they partner with the Euro League or something. San Diego. San Diego could be one. Yeah. Uh I, I just looked some up. I, I'm I'm looking at ones and like saying, would this be better in Pittsburgh? And I'm not shitting on Pittsburgh. Like Pittsburgh could be fine. I just think like realistically, St. Louis would probably be better than Pittsburgh as much as it would suck. No. Um <laughs> uh I, I heard just, basketball's like, illegal there. You know uh, the, the thing something I just read on this list, it goes Providence. I'm like <laughs> No, it's too close. <laughs> I don't think I don't so. think I don't know. you'd be like split between New York and Boston already. Like I don't think people here would be in on that. They have the Friars. Yeah. They they like the Friars. They're fine. I do think over overseas does make sense. Uh, what about Dakar, Senegal, Sam, as uh, this website so coolly uh, put in? They have the Africa League. I know. I think they need to start with um, uh, Mexico City. Start closer. <clears throat> I do think Mexico City is a very clear one. Same with Montreal and Vancouver. It says Paris. I think Louisville could support it, though. They love basketball. I mean, they got Louisville, so I think they would support a team, too. Why did you say Louisville? It's just the most random one. I think it's was a it very on common one. No, no, that was before I looked at the list. Yeah. Did you do a 2K thing and that was a team that you did? 2K is one that is in 2K, but I just, I think it's just a common one because yeah. they don't they don't have like it, it's a city that doesn't have any other professional sports. And so they would like this would be their sport. It's like the fucking Trailblazers. Like everyone loves that because I'm forgetting something. That's all. This damn got shit else. Portland, yeah, they they don't have football. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm just I, there's a zillion states out west that don't have a team, but they also like have no people. So yeah, like who else? Like other other cities that only have one sports team that like rally around like Sacramento. As much as it's a small market, like 
Kings, like now, especially now, like that's the Kings. The Kings are yeah. Sacramento. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, um, but there are also teams like I think the last thing. There are teams like I think should move out of whatever market they're in. Like, so I don't think the Nets should be in New York. I think they should go somewhere else. Because I mean, you see, like if they play the Knicks, it's a home game for the Knicks if it's at Barclays. Yeah, but people New York there is a don't give that a supports, fuck about the Nets. But they that's a city that can support two sports teams. It's big enough for sure, but like, why would you burn a franchise there if you think city extras are like the Clippers, right? Clippers have been in LA well, forever because they, and nobody they, cares about them. But the people still buy tickets, but they still sell tickets. Their tickets are LA. significantly cheaper than the Lakers. I don't know if I don't I don't know if finance. Do not like well, start put it this way though. That. Like, but if you put the Clippers in Seattle, you would make more money, guarantee. I guess. Maybe not after Steve Ballmer comes in and pays for that new stadium, but Ballmer, big peen on the stadium. It's <laughs> on the wall. Um, before we get to this next thing, I want to double back really quick. I'm not going to make this sure. a timestamp. Uh, I just found this on Twitter. Uh, it is PJ Washington revealing his reaction to being traded from the Hornets to the Mavericks. Pull, pull it up. And it's it's very funny. And so let's just just take a listen and and, and appreciate uh, All right. Mr. Washington. What would you do if you got traded to the Mavs right now? <laughs> And it was literally not three minutes later, I had got traded to the Mavs. So <laughs> I would literally jumped out of a restaurant and ran to the car. And I was excited. So for me, it's I'm nothing but excitement. I couldn't sleep and I'm just ready to start playing. This man was so fucking hyped to get out of Charlotte. <laughs> I want Charlotte's team to get good or at least competitive because I feel bad. Like mm-hmm. teams have been asked forever. They had Kemba. That was it. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's the, I will say I was watching a TikTok and it was like comparing the the worst team ever to the Pistons, and they came to the conclusion they're like the Pistons are kind of worse than this Bobcats team was, which it's crazy when you think about it. That Bobcats team had some like sneaky like good players on it. It's just the Bobcats, like they don't count. Their season was short. Like yeah, they only won single digit games, but like they had less games. Like I think the actual worst team like winning percentage was Philly, like in the eighties. <laughs> No winning percentage, it's the Hornets. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure it, it is the Hornets. <clears throat> um yeah, I think it's it's them in terms what? of winning percentage. Um but they like they had like sneaky good teams despite being the absolute worst. Um let me why am I missing? Oh, because wait, was he on Charlotte twice? Gerald Wallace? Am I getting the wrong Wallace? <clears throat> uh Gerald Wallace. Was he not on the expansion team? He was on Why? the expansion team. He was there for a while. What year was their really back. bad year? He was in I'm... Portland for a bit, too. He might have been off that team. <laughs> Why am I losing my mind? Kemba was also on that team, though, right? That was his rookie year? It was rookie Kemba. Okay, yeah, I must be losing my mind. Because then they yeah, thought they were going to Anthony Davis, and then they lost. <laughs> yeah, lost. but, like, they had rookie Kemba. They had Gerald Henderson, who was, like, a fine Solid player for time. a couple years, yeah. Corey Maggette, who was like a good veteran. Cor- you know, Corey Maggette, for his career, averaged 16 points a game. <laughs> I didn't realize he was that good. Uh, and yeah. then, like, Kemba, young Kemba, DJ Augustine, who was a, a good young player at that point. Like, they probably shouldn't have lost <laughs> that many games. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> regardless, uh, we're going down a rabbit hole. Uh, getting back to current NBA news, Spencer Dinwiddie signed with the Lakers. Um yeah, season is saved. Like, <laughs> good for them. This this feels um, uh, God damn it! They keep getting free guys. Blake Griffin to the Nets. That's what this feels like to me. This sure. feels like everyone's gonna make a huge deal out of it. Uh, let me let me find the stat for you that I found. Um, <clears throat> Spencer didn't really this season, right? We obviously know all the stuff. Like he was on Twitter defending it, like, oh, I didn't request a trade. Like, he he was bashing the Nets on Twitter a little bit, relatively so. It wasn't like all out like. Crap this I didn't. I know, like there was controversy whether or not he requested a trade. His body language had been really bad, but I didn't know that he personally went out there and was like, "I did not request a trade." Uh, I think that was reported. That was okay. through like a reporter, like you talked to. But like there was, he was like on Twitter defending or like going. Ha- he had interactions with some Nets fans on Twitter. It was, it was some weird, like just don't reply to it, buddy. You know that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> but he. Um. Yeah. Someone said if the next cannot move Dinwiddie, there's a uh, limited market. We are told he could be bought out. 
This was Nets Daily. And then Spencer Timothy said, LOL, I understand y'all are mad at me, but this ain't true. Um, and then he was like, false. Narrative. Like, he's just been talking about stuff. Uh, so I guess he, he was defending Nets. He said, we all want to win in this locker room. So it wasn't bashing them, but it was just like, why are we talking like this on Twitter? He doesn't like, um, well, he doesn't want to be known as a crybaby. Yeah, which fair enough. I don't mean to bash Spencer Respect. Dillon, but Unless he's um, lying. my point is of players that have have played, let's do go by minutes, right? Because I feel like that's more fair than games. Uh, let's say over a thousand minutes. We think that's fair. That gets you to the, the, the a thousand minutes is around Killian Hayes, Kelly Olenek, right? Of players that have played at least a thousand minutes. Spencer Dinwiddie has the fourth worst field goal percentage in the NBA. Oh, I saw a screenshot of like, <laughs> he's shooting like 38%. It's not good. He is shooting 39% uh, from the field, 32% from three. Um, I'll say this. <laughs> if he's going to a place where he doesn't have to try and sure. be a focal point, it might get easier. Because Brooklyn, how many like real initiator put pressure on the defense guys they really have like Mikael Bridges is great but besides now, him there's not a lot of kind of be the point guard types well I agree with you in theory Spencer Dinwiddie has always been a fairly ball dominant guard in the sense that he needs the ball in his hands to be his most effective because he's not a good shooter he is a career 33 percent shooter he shot 37 well abs though he shot 30 uh 40 percent um across his tenure with the Mavs everywhere else. Seven season in Brooklyn's 32%, two seasons in Detroit, 17%, one season in Washington, 31%. That is the exception to the rule. <laughs> He's not a good three point shooter. And so on a team like the Lakers where the ball is going to be out of his hands, I am skeptical that the fit is good. <laughs> they have so many balls. Yeah, but the, the Mavs is the same thing. Like you're playing with Luca. I know, but, that, but, and it was successful because he was a good three point shooter. He has never, ever been a good three-point shooter anywhere else. <laughs> I, mean, I guess if you want like, to – He was good because he had the pressure off of him. We'll see. But I am skeptical using a 76-game sample size versus the other 400. Yeah, it's all fair. <clears throat> but we'll see. Um, other NBA signings, a bit random, but we can go through quick. Uh, Bismack Biombo signing with the Thunder. Cool. Uh, it was good the other one. Just, Justice Winslow, 10-day with the Raptors. And then Muhammad Gay, 10 day to the Raps. And that is interesting because he was drafted by the Celtics. He was the uh the one of the billion well he was second the, rounders. He was the last one. He was Jordan Walsh 38, Muhammad Gay uh 39. Are they keeping them both? No, they're trading Muhammad Gay as well. So he went and now he's gone. The day. Um <laughs> uh, but there was one other one that I can't remember, um, but I don't think it was a relatively significant one. Uh, it was, let's see, I think Woj tweeted it. Sorry, no, I, I just need to know. Forget who it was. I, I remember seeing something else today. Ah, uh, yes, well. the Thunder uh, converting guard Adam Flagler to a two-way contract. He's back. <laughs> yeah, and the Heat signed Alondis Williams to a two-way contract well, a couple of days ago. And Mason Jones, et cetera, that. all that stuff. D.G. Jackson, also the Grizzlies, signed a four-year deal with the Grizzlies after playing really well. But um, anyways, uh. Let's see. The next thing is Mr. Williams, Mr. Grant. Uh, we're going back to the well because Sam so, wants to talk more about the, the Grant saga. We haven't done the podcast yet, but we talked about Grant a little bit. We showed you the clip of him missing the basket by 10 feet uh, in his final game as a Mav. So apparently, sounds like the Mavs hated Grant. Tim McMahon went on the Windy Pod. This is what he had to say. He's the Mavs insider. He's on the beat for ESPN. He said the fact that they gave up a 2030 swap for Grant Williams and then just dumped him as soon as they possibly could. And they were determined to dump him. Not just about getting PJ Washington. They wanted to be out of the Grant Williams business. He rubbed a lot of people the wrong way in Dallas. He switched from Lucas to Tatum. His <laughs> shoe selection. <clears throat> hmm. Listen to me. Maybe this is just semantics. Maybe this is just an extra piece. If they, if a significant part of their decision to trade him was that he switched from Luca to Tatum, that is absolutely ridiculous. Protect Luca. <laughs> that is so stupid. It would be stupid, but it would. I don't think that's why they. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. traded him, but I could see it pissing Luca off. But then just make a better shoe. 
that's insane, right? Like we agree that that's insane. That if that was a significant it, part of it, it's on here. It's funny, <laughs> and it's funny that I, it happened to Grant Williams because every <laughs> Grant is bad luck Brian. If bad luck Brian was an NBA player, are you familiar with bad luck Brian? Of course, of course. The goat meme. That's Grant. Uh, traded for a bag of not a bag of chips, but traded to Charlotte. Looked miserable. In the I social media video they made him do. I really want him to play well in Charlotte. I will Our ride honest. the great. I'll ride the great train till I die. I love him. I love him so much. About the losing streak. <laughs> All right. Uh, last NBA thing before we get into the rat list here is something fun that I found. Now, Sam, I may not watch movies. <clears throat> may not watch superhero movies. I do know who Bane is, and I assume you know. You're who aware Bane. of Bane. I am. Luka Doncic in his new mask looks dope as fuck. <laughs> he looks so sick. Uh, and he Hold looks like up. Bane. And maybe I'm crazy, but I, I I think it's actually technically the opposite of Bane. Because Bane has his mouth covered, not his eyes. But Luka has his eyes covered, not his mouth. But he just looks kind of ridiculous and funny. And so I wanted to bring it up on the pod because it's funny. Uh, but he broke his nose. And now he's rocking the most ridiculous mask I've ever seen. A player I have with. to full screen this. I can't clearly <laughs> yeah, see it. Yeah, that's fine. It's just huge. It's just really large. <laughs> Based on some of the other masks, like the same as Jalen's mask, except like it, Luca's a white guy. I just think Luca looks funny in it because his hair is kind of hanging over the front. Like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan of the masks. I think they look cool. And I think I think he except looks for cool. Cody Zeller. Hey, and yeah, a little bit tough. But in Luca's, to Luca's credit, wore the mask, blew out the thunder by 35. And he dropped 32, 8, and 9. So mask mm. works. W. Yeah. Good for the mask. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's jump to the rat list here. Would you like to kick us off, sir? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll go first. Uh, so I went to the casino today. Rat list, the casino. We talked about it yep. at the top of the show. We'll talk about it again. I lost $200. <laughs> it, it's not fun. Uh, so what had happened was I was up 100. I was like, so I didn't realize I was up 100. Usually 100 is the quit level for me. I like to get up 100. I'm like, okay, I had a good day. And I didn't realize I was up 100 until I had already put my bet in. I can't can't take the chips off of the circle. You will get arrested, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I lost those hands. I did not quit. And then the the deck ends. They have to reshuffle the entire shoe. Oh, that's I am disaster. even. And I'm debating leaving. Like, all the signs are pointing to Sam, you should leave. They switch dealers. Switching dealers, always bad vibes. Of course, they had to shuffle the cards again, so you don't know how it's going to, the flow is going to go. You don't know how you're going to do. And then this lady's coming over, and, and she's in a sit, and she's got a lot to say. So it was just all bad vibes. A lot of talking from the lady. Also, funny thing, probably a bad sign if the dealer knows who you are by name. They greeted this. You knew you? No, not me. The dealer greeted say, brother. this woman by name. Like, hey, like, good to see you again. Like, what? how old was this lady? Fifties. Okay, yeah. Was she smoking a cigarette? No, she was actually complaining about all the smoke. Respect. I was. That's not the vibe I was picking up on. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, but it was like weird. It was like uh, you, especially like if the dealer There's knows who you are, you're coming here a lot. Like, no, yeah, yeah, that's weird. Just, just don't go to the casino. She was like, well, this is the only place that. You know, they allow smoking, and it's true. Don't come. I don't like the smoke either. If you're complaining about the smoke, and you say this is the only place allowed, go to a different one. <laughs> what are you? No, oh, like all the casinos. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I see, I see. Yes, yes. Yeah, rat list. The money is that the end, or are you gonna yeah, talk about the part where you lost all your money? And then you just got murdered. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes. Like. <clears throat> Now, did you start with 200 down and then you lost all that? Or did you start with 100 down and then double down and put more 100? No, I just put down. all 200 in. Because you had to play $25 hands. So you need like a little bit of a, if I lose a couple, I'm not going to be out. Kind of no, cushion. yeah, of course. No, I got you. I just wasn't sure if this was like a double down scenario. Uh, Ratless Brentford, kind of. So Brentford actually won today. So W Brentford. Uh, they beat Wolves. Uh, with a pretty cool goal. I'm not going to show on the screen, though, because it got fucking blocked last time. It pissed me off. Um, but they, they won. However, they lost. So last time we talked about Brentford is when they lost to Spurs, correct? When they gave yes. up three goals in seven minutes. <clears throat> now, played Man City on... Yeah, this is also Monday. Rat List. Oh, Monday, yeah. 
I know for you too. Double rap list. I'm just as disappointed as you are. Trust me. More so because this is actually the team I root for. Monday played Man City. And they went up one. Mape. Neil Mape. Good. He's he's the pap of the Premier League, hundred percent. Mm. You know Neil Mape. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. He's just beat, keep he, talking. He causes problems. I love him. Yeah. Um, scored a goal. Got open. Scored. <clears throat> whatever. Go the entire first half, winning, playing better than Man City. They're, 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 Man City is getting some chances, but Flecken, who's the new goalie who replaced Raya, who's the love of my life, uh, Flecken kind of sucks. Mm. Not very good. Terrible. Flecken, Fleck, Flecken against Man City was. Jesus, he, he was phenomenal. He was saving everything, right? End of the first half comes, and they fucking ping the ball around the box. Uh, Brentford, I mean, and and um, Ethan Pinnock like, duffs it, and it falls to Phil Foden, and Foden scores, and they tie one. Terrible. And from then on out, Phil Foden completes his hat trick, and and Man City wins. The energy was shifted, as Jalen says. In those, like, Phil Foden scores, is probably the Tyler hero of. <laughs> Football, yeah, soccer. in extra time of the first half, too. It was just like you couldn't hold on for like two more seconds. <sighs> it was very sad. And, and Fucked me rounds. worse. I know. Terrible. Well, Brentford's real close to relegation, so it can't kind of fucking them, too. Good. I'm glad they feel the Fuck repercussions you. of Fuck their actions. You. No, no, they won today. They're safe now. But Ratless yeah, Reality on. TV. So, uh, <laughs> girlfriend activity Thursday night. I went and I watched. The premier, the premier, premier. Uh, the premiere of, I don't know what the fuck the show is called. It has something to do with thruples. If you don't know a thruple, <laughs> they have all these couples and they're looking for what I guess couple we can to call thruple? for the purpose of this uh, couple to thruple. Yeah. They're looking for and one. That's what they're looking for. <laughs> so like they have all these like they, they're four couples. They have all these singles come out. They need to make a horror movie that like just kills like people on reality shows. Like that should this be the a real setting. thing. This is a real thing. I watched two episodes of it. How was it? I mean, it's reality TV. Like all the people <laughs> are trash, but like y- it'll keep you watching. So, so it hooked you a little bit. It got you a little. Well, like I watched it for two hours. I wasn't miserable, but I I despise okay. the people that go on these shows. Yes, especially like when it's a relationship thing. It's like kind of weird. It's like. There are, I think there are exceptions. Like there are some reality TV, reality TV shows that I'm like, okay, it's not as bad. Ever seen Below Deck? No. Don't hate. Not bad. It, it it's just a. Uh, it follows like crew or like not crews, but like big boats that you can rent out. Like rich people can rent out. It follows the staff and like how they deal with the people and like there is some. Oh, like, so it's like, hey, look at these pricks that. Like, kind of yeah okay. there's also the typical like all oh, these guys are dating in the crew and stuff so there's the typical reality stuff but like okay i don't know, I, don't, I don't hate it it's not bad um the the dating ones are weird it actually agree. shows you know what's one that i've heard all my friends watch 90 day fiance is one that i've heard a lot of my friends randomly watch um how but... <laughs> who's pitching these ideas have you seen 90 day or do you know of i'm aware of what it is <laughs> have you seen the, the main the character name... of the guy no, uh, uh, he's he <laughs> he's a beast. His, I think his name's Ed. Yeah, uh, Ed's gotten like his own like spinoffs and a bunch of shit. He has Instagram followers. Ed has five hundred fifty six thousand Instagram followers now. Let me. Uh, you're gonna love Big Ed. This is this is. Oh, we need to change. Sorry, we put Matt around on the screen first of all. Um, this is. Uh, this I'll is do the overlay. You just keep. I got it on purpose. This is this is Big Ed. Look at this man. Oh, I've seen this guy. This is Big Ed. All love right, I'm Big in Ed. on Ed. <laughs> yeah, Ed's a, Ed's a beast. How can you not love Ed? Come on. Did Ed create the idea for the show, though? No, they just had him on as one of the per- people. He was the guy who wanted to date hot chicks? <laughs> well, no. I, I, the whole thing of 90 Day Fiance is they, um, I think, and I could be wrong because I only know vaguely, but they get people who are texting or talking to people that are overseas uh like oh okay yes 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 yes. i'm aware of this yeah and so ed was talking to people in different countries and then they work it out or they don't and ed has gone through like like i think three different relationships uh but he did get married ironically to i think like a waitress at one of the places that he was just eating at like not even like a fucking not even Beyonce, but then they followed him um it's so weird but yeah and look at ed look tell me you tell me you don't love ed are you kidding me? Look no, at Ed. I, I'm pro Ed. Look at him. Look at Ed. Um, but Ed's an yeah, inspiration Ed's cool. for all of us. Ed's cool. Um, so this is 
not rat list because it's anti rat list, but it is the rat list. And I'll show you why. Um, I'm, I want to introduce you to something that popped on my feed today. Um, right. And his, his, his name is Rathew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just saw this and I really wanted to share it. You it's just a picture on the show account. <laughs> it's just, it's just rat is short for Rathew. And it's just, it's just I'm a in. rat. And I like Rathew. I just I just love Rathew now. May, maybe Rathew is like a classy rat. So like this can be the, <clears throat> the anti rat list can be Rathews. Mm-hmm. I love Rathews. Shout out Rathew. Um, but real rat list. Uh, Sunday tomorrow. You may think Super Bowl. The bad thing about Sunday is that I cannot get Chick Fil A. <laughs> <laughs> I got your ass too. You were in. You were like, "What is this serious thing?" Like, yeah, it's like, well, no, it's it's a real issue, and that's like all. What you should have did is order double today. I know. You order double today. You put it in the fridge, air fryer. Good as new. So many sauces. Maybe you make that's a uh, a sauce smoothie and have it on Sunday. I have so many sauces. I'm pre game content. Bad. Um, but all real ratless the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is boring as fuck. Like I don't care who wins, and it sucks. Like I just wanted someone to root for. I would have rooted for the Ravens or to rooted for the Lions. I don't want the Chiefs or the Niners to win. I don't want either of them to win Super Bowl. You know what, <laughs> you know what I can't saying? wait for like, is it to be over. Sure. Oh, Are you going to watch Super Bowl in the NBA? Yeah, I'll be at my friend's house. Okay. Me too. All the eyes on the league. Back. Oh. All right, what do you got? <clears throat> do you want to close with that and I'll do mine I'll first? I'll close with this thing. So, Ratless, the queso debacle. So, I texted my friend Brian, who is going to – my future roommate, where I'm moving in Austin. He lives there. I said, hey, y'all doing something with the Super Bowl. Uh, he goes, yes, I am making pigs in a blanket. And I'm like, Sick. W. I can bring buffalo chicken dip if you want. Can I come? And he goes, uh, <laughs> let me read you Brian's text. Brian texts me back <clears throat> and he goes, um, <laughs> uh, here's the deal. <laughs> of course you can come. But Ethan is also making buffalo chicken dip. Now I'm all for buffalo chicken dip, but he might be insulted. And so I we had to we had to reconfigure. He's obviously joking. Uh, and I go, okay, let me know uh, what y'all need. And he goes, he doesn't answer for a while. And he goes, didn't forget about you. I'm just dis- having discussions. And I'm with his friend Mike, who is his current roommate, who he texted the group chat. I'm saying, what do we need? And I said, I heard you're having discussions because I'm with Mike. And then he goes. Do you think you can pull off queso? Now, when you hear that, what do you what what does that like make you think of? That doesn't say, can you bring queso? That says, are you asking me to make queso? And so I said that I'm like, I could definitely bring a jar, but are you asking me to make queso? Hey man, you do you, but if you want to make a good impression, I'm like, it's a good you impression. To, you want to make queso? But you're lucky, you're lucky Jack's coming. Do you know how busy this man is? I love Brian. Brian's His presence electric, alone man. should be uh, a gift. I love Brian. But I, I am going to try to make queso. I found a five-minute queso recipe where I get some ingredients. I'm going to go to the store tomorrow. I'm also going to bring the jars because I have a feeling it's going to go poorly. But I can't wait for you to uh, go outside and hear about it. I went outside today. I went golf. I went to the sim. When's the last time school? you went to the supermarket? Uh, <laughs> I, when's the last time you went to the supermarket? I Not for your girlfriend. Like, like once a week. Just grab like what I like. Do I want snacks? Do I want waters? Like I have stuff to go in there for. I don't do that. My mom goes to the supermarket. I just eat snacks here. And oh, my, par- my parents go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't do anything. Um, <clears throat> Whatever. I'll, I'll go to the supermarket if I need like snacks or whatever. Ratless, the most incompetent DoorDasher I've ever fucking interacted with. Do we have a name? I'm not going to name drop because it's like <laughs> a name I really haven't seen a whole lot of. So, so it's like, probably, I see, I see, I see. You know, somebody could be like, I know like this person. Would be. Electric. So anyways, I'm with the lady yesterday. She She has leftovers. She can eat like her two bites of food and be satisfied. I'm hungry. So I'm like, all right, I'm a DoorDash something. I get a nice like sandwich from a local pizza place. Probably like a 10 minute drive from where we're at. Not bad. Watching the Celtics like I'm fucking hungry. So anyway, we're sitting there. I'm like almost halftime. It's been like a half hour. It takes a while to cook the food. Understandably. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go shower, clean off. Because my place didn't have water here yesterday. And it's a whole nother story. But it's not that much of a rat list. 
But um, so I come out of the shower. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I really hope I don't miss the delivery. I see the, your dasher has picked up your order. I'm like, oh, like nice. Let's see where they're at. It turns out they were driving the wrong way. And you know what? I'm going to pull up some of these messages that I got because I just I was reading this and I was like, I can't believe the conversation I'm having with this dash. Were these prompted messages? Like, did you text them first or did they like reach out? They I think I said, hey, name. How is everything going? <laughs> That's when you know. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh, just, you know, want to make sure you didn't lose my order. Where where can I look at the old? Maybe I can't like pull up the old texts I had on here. Hmm, but anyways, they were like, so sorry. This app is acting weird. And like, I don't know where I'm going. Is this your first rodeo? You don't, you don't know like how to get to the highway from where you were at. Hmm. They, they're driving the wrong way for probably like a half hour. I was borderline about to cancel the order and just call it a day and go like grab something lo like really close. And I'm like, oh, like I'll wait because I just didn't want to go through the hassle of like calling, actually leaving where we were at. So this person finally figures out how the fuck to get to 95. I got my meal in the fourth quarter. I ordered right after tip off. <laughs> Unbelievable display. They gave me a $10 voucher. I got a chicken pesto sandwich on a focaccia. It's excellent. Hits every time. Even when uh, it took a little extra an hour 15 minutes to get to me was it cold no because they uh foil wrapped it good what can get anything good she didn't get anything she had leftovers it was just just one sandwich you ordered <laughs> yeah she had like her two raisin canes chicken tenders i haven't had raisin canes i've heard it's good though i went to raisin canes once i went in boston i just picked her up from the airport and we're sitting in there they have like high high what are they high top tables yeah with the stools sure. yeah so it's busy we're waiting for our food some guy just falls off the stool ambulance <laughs> came oh maybe not so much yeah, no 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 it, it's hard not to laugh <laughs> you know who would All do right, that but... who would do some shit like that grant henry grant grant would yeah. fall off the stool yeah <clears throat> henry wouldn't fall off the stool he'd fall asleep on the counter anyways he'd make him laugh he'd fall right <laughs> off the fucking stool thank y'all for tuning in i don't know how it happens but whenever we don't have anything to talk about we go for the longest it doesn't make any stack sense. the sheet i know like i came into making the sheet i was like we probably don't have anything to talk about today then we just put too much on and now we've been talking for an hour and 40 minutes um thank y'all for tuning in we appreciate it make sure to subscribe to how about them celtics uh check us out on spotify and apple check out the website how about them holy shit we do a lot of stuff we do so much this is nuts uh <laughs> i i sometimes forget we've posted since so let me take a look since three since days this, ago and in the uh, last three days we have posted one two three four five six seven eight nine videos this Thank you for watching. We appreciate the support. This You're the reason we post the videos. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Thank you very much. Send us an email, all the good stuff. I'll let Sam tell you and wrap it up. Yeah, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. So in case we post nine videos in a three-day span, you don't miss any of them. They'll come right to your notifications on your home. And go live like four times. <laughs> yeah, we went live a bunch of times. Like this, this is my best friend, the microphone. Just love it. Uh you can also find us on Spotify and Apple. If you follow us there, you'll get the full length pods and game recaps right to your inbox. So it's a great way to find us. If you're not watching actively on the computer, TV, phone, whatever you use YouTube on. If you're driving, use Spotify. Don't watch it. Um, email. Shout out to RJ and also Ian Sods who emailed us at hbtcpod today at gmail.com. It's a great way to get in touch with us. We love hearing from you. Sorry I yelled at you, RJ. I thought you were talking about Sam Hauser. Uh, we read your emails each podcast. We do love to hear from you, so definitely reach out. We always have good feedback. You can also find us at How About Them Seas on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. The Facebook page is just the name of the podcast. All live streams will be there and on YouTube and also on Twitter. You can follow Jack's Twitter at Jack's Money NBA. You can follow me at Sam with France NBA. It's it for us. Check, check, go.